This will show how Code Refinery edits its videos using the tool FFmpeg edit list. So I'm not going to start from scratch here, but I'm going to show how you start with an existing template. So in this case, we have our edit list from the previous workshop. Uh, so here is the video edit list file. It is YAML. It's already been updated. This is just the last day of the workshop. So I will search for day six. Here we go. All of the basic information is here because this has been used previous years. So I'm going to uncomment the input. So until another input command is given, this will be the input. This year, I will not include this day six intro. So I will go straight to day six testing. So I'm scrolling down and I will uncomment all of this. So here we go. The description and the basic metadata is all the same from last year. I'm not editing that. So instead, I will come down here to this edit list part. So now in my other window, I will play the video, the raw video. I will use the MPV player and the option HR seek allows me to seek to any position, not just the keyframes, which is useful for finding the exact times efficiently. And I play the video day six obs.mkv. So I play. So you will probably not be able to hear the audio from this video, but that's okay. So I push the control O key for MPV and it makes the times appear here. And now I start scrolling. So I can use the arrow keys to efficiently move up and down. So, okay, this is the intro. I'm continuing to go. Okay, now it looks like we're starting and I paused. So I'm moving backward some and it looks like around here is where we're starting. So I go back a little bit. Here. So I paused where I want to start. And I have a hotkey in OBS, the backslash key. So I push this and it copies the time to the clipboard. Okay, I can make this small and out of the way. Okay. I remove the start time and add that here that time I copied. Now I'll keep playing. Okay, so I'm replaying several times to find... Uh, no. Okay, so here I copied a time. So now this is the time of motivation, which I'm putting here and I'm subtracting one second from it. Okay, there we go. So this is the basic idea. I scroll through the video, find these cut points, and you will see that it's a lot easier when the instructors use good presentation strategies. So if it's easy for the learners to tell what we're talking about, then it's easy for the editor to copy. Okay, here, so we just switched. Okay, we're going, we're going to concepts now. So I will pause the recording and I will be back after I'm edited. Bye. So I'm back a little bit early. So one thing I can do with MPV is to adjust the speed of playback. So I might usually play something quite fast and then I can more quickly go through. Okay. Okay, I'm back. So we're about to go to this exercise. So we see here in the edit list, I've declared the time the exercise introduction starts. And now I move forward and I see, okay, yeah. So there the video went away. So, now we've gone to the exercise. 
So I go forward a bit. There, so I ca just captured the time when the people go away. So exercise starts. And now I scroll forward for a bit. Okay, here people come back, I play. Okay, I guess this is around the time. And I paste in the return time. And I will keep going. There is one more point to note. So here we see we're making a table of contents with these different chapters. But what about this? Dash colon. So dash means this section Q&A starts at exactly the start time here. So basically it avoids me having to duplicate this data from here down to here. Okay, and now I'm done ent ed entering the edit list. I will quit MP MPV for now, and let's actually run it. So we run it with ffmpeg edit list, which I already have installed. I give it the path to the video edit list, which is git uh, nine workshop. Okay, this is the path and to the edit list. So we need to give it the input directory, which is dot and the output directory, which is this. Um, we will tell it we want it to only process um, day six. Uh, this is testing. And I think that's probably good. So I will run this. Edit. Ah, of course, it's we need the output. We need to tell it this is the output. OK, and now it runs. OK, so we saw some OK, some errors. We're just going to ignore that for now. If we scroll up, we see that each segment, it ran FFmpeg to separate them out. And then it ran FFmpeg once in order to combine them all together. So these are these segments. So here's one segment, here's one segment, here's one segment, and here's one. It prints a bunch of debugging information. And it seems to work. Great. OK. So next up, we want to mm, run it and tell it to re-encode. So actually, first, let's show an example of an error. So let's say this timestamp was uh, 45. So now this is after the stop time. Is it going to work? Well, we can check it. So if we run it with the dash C option, it won't do any encoding, but will tell us that there is an error. It's a bit hard to see, but it is here. There's a bad time lookup. OK, there we go. So it's fixed. Now we run it again with the re-encode option. The re-encode option means that it will basically not just extract the videos directly, but will actually do a proper video encoding. So this will take a little while. So I will pause again and see when it's done. OK, we're back, and it's done encoding. It asks me, do I want to overwrite the file? because I had already generated, generated it once without the re-encode option. So I click Y, and it overwrites. OK, so what do we have? If we look, list the out directory, the things that are day six in there, we see there is the output, output mkv file and the output info.txt file. So we could go and play this to check it. I will avoid doing that now. 
if we look at the output day6.info.txt file, we see that this is the YouTube video description. So it has the first line is the title on YouTube, some blank lines, then the description. The line spacing is not very good right now, but we see here's a table of contents. So in here, we added the times in the raw video. And notice it automatically translates it to the times in the processed video. And then this is a standard footer, which is added to the end of every video. This is the separate field workshop description at the top. And now this is what we will upload to YouTube. So with that, we've been able to edit this video in a way that doesn't require a specific editor. It doesn't really require fancy skills and is trackable and shareable with Git, which is pretty nice. So now I'm going to go take this video I just made, process it with FFmpeg edit list to add in um, the chapters and post it to YouTube. Thanks and bye.